Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! And welcome back to the Elm Hill City Zoo, a day before a new DLC, the Hero Pack will be released, obviously for our favorite game, the Planet Zoo. So this is a very, very exciting time and I cannot wait for tomorrow. Today it is finally time to build a habitat for timber wolves in our zoo. I know that a lot of you guys asked about it. Actually, this wasn't my original plan for today's video, but the release of the new pack completely like messed up my roadmap and my schedule for this zoo. Uh, so that's why I decided to build a habitat for the timber wolves today. If you've watched my previous videos from the zoo, you will uh, recognize this area where we are building. It is basically a little canid area in our zoo. We already have the dolls and the dingoes uh, in here and right now we'll be adding the timber wolf, like a third canid to this area. And I will be also using uh, some of the design I did for uh, the dolls and the dingoes. So in case you haven't seen those, those videos, I'll put probably the doll one uh, in the description and on the screen so you can go and see how I did like this wall and the barrier for gas because I will be using it today in the video and I created it basically in the doll video so uh, the link uh, will be here somewhere on the screen or uh, down in the description. This video is actually a longer one because uh, this habitat will be a bit detailed, it's also a big one and will have a big shelter with a backstage area so there was a lot of things to build. Uh, so I will be skipping some parts, for example like building this uh, wall and the uh, barrier for gas and also building the fences around the uh, whole enclosure. This will be skipped so that this video won't be even longer. Uh, but but I am sure you guys will be able to figure out how I do did those things without me having to show you it on the screen. So as I told you guys, my plans for the zoo changed a bit because I wanted to start something big, a big project here in the Elm Hill City Zoo. But when the new Euro pack uh, was announced and uh, you know uh, there was an announcement that there will be 250 new building pieces, I decided to wait a bit for those pieces because they will be very very useful for my new builds and also I would like to showcase the new uh, pieces there to use the most of them that I can. I also have like an inspiration for our project and it is a building for Euro basically so uh, this can be very very useful. I mean the new pieces would could be very very useful so I decided that I would wait for it and I will go through the list uh, of the animals that we still don't have in the game and uh, you know that I wanted to add here and that's how I came up with an uh, with a timber wolf basically and I am very very excited to build for it finally as you guys know uh, if you watch my previous videos I am totally a dog person so building uh, the habitats for wolves dingoes and all of the canids uh, is like very very pleasant for me because I love dogs and I want to ha give them like the best uh, you know uh, enclosures that I can so yeah building it was a pleasure but it was actually a lot of work I thought it would be quicker but uh, I I of course decided to do uh, things hard for me and build a very detailed shelter shelter and a backstage area but and you will basically be able to see it all in a minute in this video so if you are looking for some inspiration for your backstage areas this is definitely a video for you so what surprised me a bit and made me a bit like happy <laughs> was that the list of the animals that I had like opportunities that I could build for today wasn't very long so that means that we uh, are slowly coming you know the maybe not to the end because there's still uh, so much to build in this zoo but 
it is basically big. We have a lot of animals in here, so there are not too many options. I mean, uh, we have, like, I have those plans for, for example, primate house and older houses, the African area, but there are still some animals that don't fit into those, like, certain areas and, you know, buildings and stuff that I have planned for the future. And there are not too many of them, so this is good, <laughs> actually, uh, because... You know, I'm not sure if my computer will be able to handle the zoo in the future. It is still working pretty good, I'm really surprised, but, uh, you know, sometimes, from time to time, there's a lag or uh, the animals sometimes are doing weird stuff because there's just so many of them. I actually consider to sell a lot of them and, you know, give the older of them the contraceptive so that they cannot breed and make make more babies uh, so that, the, uh, you know, the, the enclosures won't be so crowded. Maybe it will help, but there's also a tons and tons of building pieces. So let's just hope that we'll be able to build for you know a lot and lots animals still in the zoo because i would like to finish it and i have like certain areas that i already told you guys about and yeah i'm so excited for the zoo this is like my flagship you know zoo here on the channel you guys always ask about the elm hill city zoo and it is so pleasant and nice to me uh, to see that you know uh that you enjoy the zoo so much and that you know you are waiting for those episodes waiting for the new stuff from the zoo and this is just amazing to me but coming back to this big project don't worry guys i will uh, go back to it as soon as we'll build uh, new habitats from the animals from the Euro pack. There's not too many of them, basically four, because the salamander will be a part of our reptile house, although it's not a reptile, it's an amphibian. But I think that I will also put the frogs and all the stuff to the uh, reptile house as well as all the reptiles in the game. So yeah, there are basically only a few habitats to build, like four, and then we'll be back to the big project that will probably take us uh, some episodes, uh, you know, several of them. And I'm not spoiling anything because I want you guys to be surprised, <laughs> but I think you would love it. Because I had so many requests about it that, you know, I did some research, I already know what I want to build. I know what the backstage stuff should look, for example, so uh, yeah, I'm ready, but I'm not spoiling anything more. You will be able to see our new project in a couple of episodes, and this is so, so exciting to me. So, as you guys can see, we already have like a basic shape of our habitat for the timber wolves today. Uh, I wanted to uh, create something very natural for them. When While I was looking for inspiration for this habitat, I saw that there are like basically two different approaches to building habitats for the timber wolves in zoos. One of them is very, very natural, like a part of the forest or... Uh, something like this and some of them are more like a city zoo kind of habitats with uh, you know no grass and uh, just some logs and so on so I definitely wanted to go for a more natural stuff even though it's a city zoo basically but I wanted to give them a very nice habitat uh, so I thought like a of a like a river bank or something with a, a little uh, waterfall and and, you know a lot of frogs different you know elevations and of course a lot of plants and trees so they that they can feel like in a forest or something this habitat is a bit inspired by an artwork or concept of the uh, habitat for the gray wolves that will be built or is already built I'm not sure in the Detroit Zoo in the United States uh, so they had also this nice river with a little uh, like waterfall and a lot of frogs and stuff like this. So I took a bit of inspiration, but only like a shape, the general shape of this habitat is inspired by it. Uh, the shelter and so on is just my creation. So uh, I just wanted to see how, you know, the typical timber wolf or general wolf habitat is looking. And I found a really, really nice 
stuff on the internet, so I was able to come up with something like this. So, I will be adding a lot of rocks to this habitat, as you guys can see. I also used like a pile of rocks that we created to, uh, for the beavers, and then I used it in different habitats, and I think that it's really useful, and of course it makes it all look very natural, so I am using it wherever, I, or whenever I can. And also, of course, I used the aquatic rocks, which uh, with the color of, you know, the... Uh, the rocks that we have in game. I am using here the taiga and the temperate rocks because I think they look best with this biome, uh, the more the most natural and I hope that in the end you guys will like it. So while uh, you know choosing the texture of the terrain I decided to add a lot of dirt especially like on the parameters of the enclosure because you know the canids or the wolves basically uh, they have their territories and where while you are in the zoo you often can see them like going around their uh, constantly going around their uh, habitats or their enclosure this is because they feel like this is their territory and they are patrolling it around so uh, that's why there is also there's always a lot of dirt around because this is basically their path that they follow all the time to check if their territory is fine if everything is okay so uh, there is no grass around uh, new defense and that's why i i also decided to include that after the rocks i will obviously start to add plants foliage all the trees to this habitat uh, to make it the most natural that I was able to do, uh, I added a lot of pine trees because I like thought that it, they will look good with our uh, like uh, wolves, that they will look very natural, like their natural habitat. So yeah, this habitat will definitely be very dense. Uh, normally, I think that the guests in Planet Zoo would uh, like complain that they cannot see the animals. Uh, because the view for them isn't the best, but in their uh, real life, this was how the like nice wolf habitat would look. Uh, they need to have some privacy, and it is not guaranteed that when you go to the zoo, you always see all of the animals because sometimes they are hiding, sometimes they don't want to be looked at, and this is totally normal, and we shouldn't get upset about it. Uh, but yeah, this is one of those habitats that. You basically see the wolves when they want to go uh, like to the water area or to grab some toys, uh, but they are mainly sticking to the back of it. They are, have their shelter there and so on. So you don't always see them, but I I actually really like it this uh, idea because. And I think that I already told this a million times that I don't like this approach of, you know, that the animals should be given to guests like on the plate so that, you know, you see them just you go to the fence and you see them all and there is nothing like exciting about it all or, you know, this is just boring. Uh, the the best habitats are those that are very natural and the ones that you have to like do some effort to see the animals because they feel so uh, you know like at home and so natural that they are hiding somewhere they are laying under the tree they are laying in tall grass and just having their f time and you are just a visitor who went to who went there to look uh, how they are doing in their environment and for me this this is how it should look. So this habitat is definitely something like this. You also could see me using my new favorite thing <laughs> that I recently discovered. I think I saw some other content creator. I might have seen some other cr creator do it, but I'm not sure because I saw a lot of videos recently and I think that I took it from someone else, but sorry, I cannot tell you from who because I totally forgot. But using the this small broken uh, tree trunk, I think it is called in English, I'm not sure, uh, like upside down and it has those roots and it looks like a branches, like a dry plant or something and it looks so so natural and you know when you put it inside a, a sound like a pile of plants or foliage it just looks so natural that 
so I'm sure that you'll be able to see it a lot in my videos from now on because I really really enjoy it. In a second I will start to work on a small waterfall but let's talk about the Euro pack right now. So if you've been following me on my socials, I mean the Instagram or you've seen my community posts in here on YouTube, you probably know how excited I am about the Euro pack that is coming out tomorrow and I cannot wait. And I am this excited because I am basically from Europe, as you guys probably know. I am from Poland and uh, one of my biggest interests is traveling, so I've seen a lot of countries in Europe. So I know a bit about the architecture in Europe, I also know the animals and that's why I am so so excited about it because it is so close from home and so familiar to me that yeah this is just just amazing. I know there are some mixed opinions about the new pack. Some of you think that it is not interesting at all and not worth spending your money because the animals are boring. And yeah I totally get it. If you are from a different part of the world you might think that a badger or an ibex or for example a fallow deer isn't like uh, exciting at all but for me it basically is because there are such an iconic animals that live in my country and in countries around uh, like very close to mine that yeah this is just amazing because those animals are just so iconic to us here in Europe I think I sort of can compare it a bit, I mean this excitement or if you are happy about the new pack or not, with a recent uh, North America animal pack, uh, because if you are for example from the US or Canada and you saw the cougar or the uh, American alligator, you probably was also very very excited because you know those animals because they live in your country. And for me, for example, those two were not as exciting, don't get me wrong, I love those animals, I think that they are beautiful, but the cougar is just another big cat, we already have so many of them in the game, and the alligator is another crocodilian, which we have basically too much right now, when some other groups of animals, such as for example monkeys, are such underrepresented group like we don't basically have any of those and this is there is such an iconic zoo animals that I am sure that we cannot could live without an alligator and for you guys if you are not from Europe this is for example a fallow deer if you already have a moose and uh, reindeer this is a uh, alpine ibex if you have the doll sheep and so on and yeah, I get it, but I also get why the American people were so excited about the North America pack, but because now I'm basically super excited about the Euro pack. So, uh, as you guys probably know, we get 5 new animals and 250 new building pieces. So let me start uh, to talk about uh, the building pieces, because this is probably something I am most happy about, because uh, we didn't have any of those in the last uh, big DLC, uh, last update and now we get so many and this is the architectural style that I am so familiar to, uh, like from the Italy, from the Switzerland, from Germany, from France, I've been to those countries, I even have some friends from those countries, so this is so amazing to me. And I'm also most of the times looking for inspiration in European zoos while building here uh, on YouTube, so those pieces will be so so useful for me to use that I cannot wait. Uh, I already saw a lot of those screenshots that the Planet Zoo shared with us and this there is just this one texture of the stone wall that I already love and I know that I will use in all of my zoos and builds but there are so many small details and a lot of you know architectural props and things that 
yeah, I cannot wait to see them all and I'm sure that also they are recolorable, so this is just amazing. I am so, so, so excited. Also, we get things like food trucks and coaches, which is amazing because we've been like doing those from those very tiny and small pieces just to have them for, you know, the sake of realism because uh, you... Uh, a lot of you like put the uh, coaches uh, near the entrance so that you have those you know parking for coaches so that you can imagine that a school trip just came to the zoo or something and now it will be just one piece that we'll be able to use and this is so 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 amazing also we get christmas lights uh which is maybe not as exciting but you know, it is a Christmas time, so if you are in the mood of making, uh, you know, a uh, Christmas theme zoo, you can totally do it right now because we even will have more of those lights now. When it comes to the animals, I live in Poland and four out of five of those animals also live in Poland, so I am very familiar with them. The only animal that doesn't live in my country is the Alpine Ibex because it basically lives in Alps and we the Alps are not in Poland they are in for example Italy France Switzerland Austria or Germany uh, so those animals are living in those very high uh, you know mountains but apart from the ibex we have all of those animals here in Poland so starting with the lynx uh, the lynx in Poland mainly lives in mountains with Tatra mountains and so on but they are uh, sort of moving around our countries er, and there were some sightings of the lynx near to my hometown recently and uh, I live by the Baltic Sea so this is so far from the mountains and from where they normally would live and yeah we have those it is very very hard to see a lynx in its natural habitat they are very like uh, you know they're hiding they're afraid of humans so uh, you probably won't meet a lynx when you go to the forest but there were some lucky people who saw them they are definitely very very like beautiful animals and the model that was showcased by Frontier also is very very beautiful I love the pattern uh, on the fur I also love you know their eyes so definitely an animal that I am super excited about and that will build something very cool for uh, very soon. Then we have a salamander and the salamander fire salamander. It lives in Polish mountains. I actually saw it once or twice I think uh, when, because when I was a child I used to go to Polish mountains a lot for hiking and after a rain uh, I saw the salamander near the hiking trail and yeah it was very very mesmerizing very beautiful because it is so like jet black with those spots like yellow spots that is very hard not to spot actually uh, but it is very very beautiful but also really really shy so it was afraid of me and i didn't want to stress it so i just took a look and let it go <laughs> But yeah, a very very nice addition for an exhibit animal. I think the one of the best when it comes to European small reptiles, amphibians and so on. So this is definitely a very very nice one. I actually uh, also would love to have an European hamster because they are so cute. Uh, but we don't have any mammals in those small exhibits, which is a pity actually. Uh, but yeah, the salamander is definitely a very, very good choice. So then we have a fallow deer. And the fallow deer is uh, somehow common in Poland and in the countries around Poland. Uh, they are living in forests, in fields, uh, not maybe in the north of our country, but more in the south you can definitely see them and also if you go to a reserve uh, for wild animals you also can see a lot of them we have those in all of our zoos i think they are really really common and also they are really really beautiful with those white dots so yeah another great animal i always love when new ungulates are added to uh, the planet zoo because i think that they are such an like staple zoo animal animals a lot of zoos like 
I think most of the zoos have so many ungulates because they are like easy to care for more or less and uh, you know they breed well but also there are uh, so many kinds of them that you can showcase you know different kinds of ungulates from Africa, India, you know Europe in one zoo and to me they are always interesting. So then we'll get a badger and the badger I was actually saw uh, some time ago while driving a car. It was by the roads like just walking <laughs> you know uh, because they are nocturnal mainly. Uh, they live in burrows and uh, yeah they are really really beautiful. I love their pattern and their colors. This white and black on their face is like really uh, you can see it really from the distance. It is so like vivid and yeah, they are very very cool animals that live in forests here in Poland and they are omnivores so they eat basically everything. They have like those burrows where, where they live and where they breed and have kids and yeah. This is actually something also new that we'll get in our uh, new DLC and update. Those were, there will be burrows. I'm not sure how it will look, but we'll also have a cameras and we'll be able to link the cameras to the screen so that the guests will be able to see what is going on in the burrows. So this is also a really, really nice update and I cannot wait for it. And the next animal is the uh, alpine ibex that I s told you guys already about. This is actually an animal that I wanted from the very beginning because uh, I remember having it in Zoo Tycoon 2 and I loved building, you know, some mountains for it and stuff like this. So, uh, of for sure, the habitats for the alpine ibex will be very, very interesting. You know, a lot of rocks and uh, climbing and stuff like this. I hope that they are traversable area will be like excellent because I already see you know myself building like a rock formation for them to climb uh, because they basically do it in the uh, real life they can always almost like you know uh, climb walls and things like this because this is just crazy what they can do uh, so yeah another amazing ungulate to be added and I think that they chose so many like iconic European animals of course there are more uh, but uh, I'm sure that they had to choose five as always I am a bit you know uh, disappointed that there is no wild boar in the game uh, still because it is also like an iconic European animal and also a red deer or a weasel or stuff like this I would love to see it in the game I'm also a bit like sad that there are no birds uh, from the from Europe uh, because we have some really nice ones like storks for example or stuff like this uh, I sort of thought that this new DLC will be an aviary DLC or something like this as I told you guys in my previous videos but I am hopeful for the future that we'll have more birds uh, I am still very happy about the European pack definitely the 250 Building pieces is something that excites me the most, but I also love the animals. And, you know, as I told you guys, I cannot wait basically, but the aviaries will be like a game changer for this game, something that will add a lot to our zoos. So uh, if the rumors are true or if the, you know, anticipation is so high, I think that they are working on it or doing stuff that, uh, that it can be implemented, but we will have to wait and see but my hopes are very very high still so as you guys can see we are building a shelter for our wolves so as a build when it comes to the building i wanted to build something similar to the things that we already have in our park so it doesn't look like a weird or something like a totally different style uh, so I went for something similar to the thing that we've built for uh, arctic foxes or the uh, beavers and the prairie dogs uh, a building made of those logs uh, I thought that it will, it will look good uh, as a building for the wolves basically. Inside there will be one big area for them to sleep together but also some like stalls or night quarters for them to be separated for some medical training uh, for stuff like this. 
And outside there also be one holding pen if there's a need of separating our wolves, it can be done. Uh, so a lot of mesh pieces, a lot of you know beams and stuff like this is inside of the shelter as you guys can see. Uh, but yeah, I had to add it to divide those uh, this shelter into different areas for basically sake of realism again this is how the shelters for those animals look like they are basically dangerous animals like the wolves uh sometimes they are like very tame that you know they know their keepers so they can um, play with them you know they let them pet pet them and so on but we need to remember that they are wild animals so they are need the, all the safety measures must be like implemented so uh, a lot of you know crates a lot of different uh, mesh and uh, steel so that they are uh, they will stay you know closed down and not to, to be a threat to our keepers so it's actually very late why i am recording this voiceover and i have to wake up tomorrow for work so i won't be able to talk to you guys through the entire video there are still some minutes left and i hope that you'll watch it uh, without my commentary we will still continue watching me doing this shelter and then some stuff like around it uh, but unfortunately i won't be able to talk through the whole episode definitely stay tuned till the end because there'll be a lot of cinematic shots showing you uh the whole uh, you know enclosure the wolves and the area around it because i won't include everything in this video i won't include like uh, stuff inside the shelter you'll see it in the uh, cinematic shots but also i will want to include like a foliage and stuff like this around this habitat so this will be all uh, to see in the cinematics uh, by the end of this video so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, if you did and you are not a subscriber of this channel please consider to click the subscribe button uh, this would really mean a world to me and basically will help my little channel to grow if you like this video uh, please give it a big thumbs up down below Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have any suggestions on our future for our future videos or if you are very excited about the uh, Euro pack as well or maybe there are some animals that you are missing in this pack tell me down below I always try to respond to all the comments so I'm sure your comments won't be unnoticed okay guys thank you so much for watching this video have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one bye guys